So I want to give a brief overview of who we are uh, as a company, Alliance Coal. We are uh, publicly traded on NASDAQ under ARLP. Uh, we just announced our 2014 earnings about a week and a half ago. Um, we did pretty well at $2.3 billion in revenue, about $450 million in uh, uh, net income. We do that with 5,000 employees. And uh, 2014 marked the 14th consecutive year of record growth for us. And included in those 14 years were 27 consecutive quarters of increased cash distributions to our investors. So in an industry where I think we're facing some significant negative pressure, uh, I think we've done relatively well as a business. Um, when I mentioned the coal industry, just as a show of hands, how many of you actually think of high tech or technology when we're discussing the coal industry? Not even one, right? <laughs> okay. So. This was the cover of our 2013 annual report. And I, I don't know how well that shows up uh, from the audience, but the top half there is a coal stockpile. Right? That's, the, that's the material that we produce. That's what we're proud of. The bottom half of that is a fiber optic patch panel. Now, I was shocked when I actually saw that. I didn't know that was coming out, but it does go to show that technology goes to the core of our business. Without it, we can't be successful. Without having employees that understand how to implement technology in our business, there's no way that we would have the successes that we've had. So who am I? Uh, again, my name is Jeremy Patches. I'm the director of technology at Alliance. Uh, I've been with the company for 10 years now. I started off as a network engineer. I'm a, a network engineer by trade. That's what I've done my entire career. And I was a point that I, I take with pride. I was the first technology employee that we had at Alliance Coal that was not in our corporate office. So um, I like to say it was kind of my responsibility to, to manage and maintain all of these systems as they were growing up over time. There was some talk about culture. And I, I put this slide in. I, I wanted to spend a lot of time on it, but I'm going to try to cut it down a little bit. There are two phrases that we have that are said repeatedly throughout our business, all the way from senior management down to the, down to the mines. And those two things are, it's who you're with and it's what you know. And what we use those two phrases to communicate to all of our employees is that we, we value them all as individual employees, we value them as team members, and without their success individually and as teams, we can't be successful as a business. And I think that that's something that's important to have embedded in your culture. Because if your employees don't recognize the value that you place on them, they're not going to value working for you as a business. The second part of this, it's what you know. And again, that clearly communicates, we're about knowledge. We're about people's mental abilities. We're not looking for warm bodies just going through motions. We want people that can actually think, uh, evaluate and analyze the situation, ev evaluate and analyze our business and help us improve and add more value. Uh, the bottom portion there, we do have a corporate intern program. Uh, we call it Try Before You Buy. Um, we like to bring in college students, we'll expose them to our culture, understand who they are as people, make sure that there's a proper fit. Coal mining is not for everybody, um, but those that uh, enjoy it, uh, they stay for a very long time. So I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to come up with a real world example of a training program that we put together. Of course, I'm a network engineer by background, so this might be an interesting question. How many of you actually know what spanning tree is? Yes. All right, more, more than one. This is excellent. All right, so really, really top level overview here. Spanning tree is a, a technology that was developed sort of alongside with Ethernet, and it's a way uh, I, I'd like to refer to as a safety valve. Right? It's meant to prevent people that are installing networks from creating a nuclear meltdown, right? The, when you connect a switch, a series of switches together, you create a loop, bad things can happen in the network environment. Now we have thousands of switches deployed. We have thousands of miles with the fiber optic cable deployed in our coal mines. And all of these systems have to be maintained by our operational personnel. And these are not trained IT professionals. These are not people that have network engineering backgrounds. Uh, these are folks that we were hired, you know, hired in originally as coal miners. They uh, learned knowledge related to electrical work. They became certified electricians, and somehow that translated into you're now a network administrator uh, when we started deploying IP networks in the coal mines. 
growing off their past experience, when you hand them fiber optic cable and hand them switches to deploy into a coal mine, they view that as a low voltage network. It's, a, it's just a low voltage uh, signal. They just send it along, you, you get to the end of the cable, uh, you put some ends on it, throw another switch in place and roll out another spool of cable or you splice it together. So our operational networks grew organically, which is the complete opposite of what our IT, you know, our corporate IT at Network Engineering Group really wants. They like to configure a switch, plug it in, it stays in the closet, no one touches it, um, and it works. Two very different worlds, two very different backgrounds. What it created for us was a massive problem. Right? Spanning tree is designed around some algorithms, it's all math. And when you start operating outside of the boundaries of what those algorithms are able to calculate, very unpredictable things happen. You end up with performance issues, reliability issues, we have downtime. And as we started deploying safety and communication systems that were relying upon these IP networks to function, this now became a mission critical safety issue to us that had to be solved. So we needed to get both sides. We needed to get our operational personnel and our technical personnel together to solve this problem and we needed them to use the same vocabulary. Right? They come from two different worlds, two different backgrounds, and they really speak two different languages. So we started with the basics. We decided, let's focus on spanning tree, right? That's the one technology or one protocol that, that's causing these issues. So let's go out and let's uh, condense together. Uh, we went to a well-known IT technical training vendor, and we said, give us all of your material on spanning tree. And they came back with stacks of material, multiple courses, lots of diagrams, lots of information. We went through and cut and pasted and distilled it down into as tight of a package as we possibly could to cover you know, what is this protocol, uh, why is it in use, where do you use it, how do you fix it. That was step one. Step two is we needed our folks to understand how is this uniquely applied in our business. Obviously we're having problems with it, chances are it's because of the way that we're using it. So let's, let's bring everybody out. We brought our technology groups, we brought our operations groups, and this is where it's slightly different than I think what a lot of the center of excellence programs are. We don't go somewhere else. Uh, you know, we, we bring everybody to one of our production facilities. So we brought our training partner in, we brought our technical staff in, we brought operations staff in from multiple mines to one facility. We got out the actual switches that we use. We uh, got out the actual network diagrams, topology. We used configurations that we use in production and, and learned off of real world examples so that they, they could relate all of this theoretical book knowledge that they just learned about the protocol and relate it directly to what we have, what they touch and, and use every single day. Uh, and one important note on that, most of my experience, again, from, I'm from the operational technology group, operations technology, and it's two halves, operations and technology. Those were two silos before our group was formed. And it's important to not continue to treat them as individual silos. What we wanted to do was bring everybody together in one place, give the same training material at the same time in the same environment. It levels the playing field. And what that creates is an environment then when everybody feels like they're an equal. We didn't want uh, senior network engineers to come into, uh, come into this training session, and I, I know this already, I don't, I don't need to listen to it. Um, we didn't want our operations folks to come in and say, you know what, you, you totally don't understand the way our coal mine works. You totally don't understand the dynamic environment that we're in. So we set a level playing field where everybody was on equal. And that was able, you know, after we went through that, oops, uh, after we went through that, uh, we, we looked outside to, again, to a third party. Uh, we looked to vendors like Cisco. We looked to Industrial IP Advantage. We looked to people that develop best practices documents and uh, frameworks for how technology should be applied in industry. We, you figure it's been around for 30 years, somebody must have successfully implemented Spanning Tree at one point in time. And we brought them in and we put all three of these things together in a room with our IT and our OT folks and said, okay, focus on Spanning Tree. Focus on the problems that we're having in our environment and let's figure out a solution to this. So what came out of this was get rid of Spanning Tree which is okay, it's, that's a good answer, right? That's, that, that's fine, we can deal with that. that. That's at least moving in the right direction. What happened was our IT folks now had an appreciation for the dynamic environment that we're dealing with. They now had uh, an appreciation for the scale that we're dealing with. 
they had now had a better appreciation for the fact that all of our operations folks, this was not their full-time job. Taking care of these switches and these networks is not what they're there to do. Their, their purpose is to get coal out of the ground for us. Our operational folks now had an appreciation for what IT has to deal with. Standards, compliance, protocols that are built to do certain things in a certain way. And they all came together and looked at the frameworks that, provi that were provided and said, you know what, spanning tree is not what we need to do. We need to all step back from this and figure out a better way. Because we created that level playing field, because we allowed these relationships to develop between both sides, instead of focusing on solving the spanning tree problem, the entire process was focused on how do we create problem solving skills within this group. So now, after they leave, we have months worth of uh, communication that go back and forth, multiple phone calls, site visits, emails, et cetera. They re-architect the, the underground network. We decide to use different protocols. Uh, we change the topology of the network and make it easier for our operations folks to continue to grow in the way that they grow. What, what this leads to is there's no quick fix. There's no one-size-fits-all training program. Instead, we decided to focus on the culture and making sure everybody understood what we were about as a business and that everybody was there to help each other out. The second thing that we wanted them to focus on, or that we recognized, was this was going to be a long-term investment. You know, it took us, we've been doing this for three to four years, and I think that we've now just reached the point where we have um, sustained momentum Right, where the energy that we're putting into this is now less than the value that we're getting out. We've got more people involved that continue to have these conversations and continue to solve new problems. And I think that that's, uh, in my opinion, the, the important takeaway from this is when you develop your training programs, make sure you're looking at problem solving skills and reinforcing your culture in addition to solving a business problem. That's where you're going to get the true value long term. That's all I can. Thank you. <laughs>